Thank you, everybody. It's great to be with you. It's fantastic to be here in Texas, the Lone Star State of the great United States of America. If I am correct, Lone Star State means that independence, freedom, and sovereignty are the dearest values in this part of America. If this is true, and it must be true as I look around, then we have something in common, even in Hungary is over 5,000 miles from Dallas. My country, Hungary, is the lone star state of Europe. The main difference between our countries is that, unfortunately, the Ewing Oil Company is not paying corporate income tax in Budapest. <laughs> but independence, freedom, and sovereignty is what we Hungarians fought for in the last 500 years. We vote for Christianity in the Middle and Modern Ages, and we fought for Christian democracy in the 20th century and continue to fight to this day. We are a nation of 15 million in the heart of Europe with a unique language. Pope Francis once told me that Hungarian was the official language in heaven because it takes an eternity to learn. <laughs> it's just a slight exaggeration. That's probably enough to know about Hungary. As for myself, you should know that I am an old-fashioned freedom fighter. I'm, I am also the longest-serving prime minister in Europe, the only anti-migration political leader on our continent, a father of five, and grandfather to five grandchildren, a leader of a country that is under the siege of progressive liberals day by day. There are many things that the Central European anti-communist, old-fashioned freedom fighter, raised under communist rule, never dared to dream of. One of them is giving a speech at the CPAC here in the United States. In the land of the free, where the spirit of liberty shines brighter than at any other place on earth. Today, this dream came true, and I can never be grateful enough. So I want to thank the organizers for inviting me, especially Matt Schlapp, and thank you all for welcoming me. The most distinguished conservatives of the United States want me to speak at their conference. I was wondering in the last two or three weeks what you want to hear from me. I come from a thousand-year-old country with rich history, but let's be honest, Hungary is far from being a global superpower. The US is a global superpower, your leaders should give an opening speech at our conferences in Hungary. <laughs> but I think you managed to confuse a lot of people by inviting me. For example, the leftist media. I can already see tomorrow's headlines. Far-right European racist and anti-Semite strongman, the Trojan horse of Putin, whole speech at conservative conference. <laughs> but I don't want to give them any ideas. They know best how to write fake news. Instead, I tell you the truth. In Hungary, we introduced a zero tolerance policy on racism and anti-Semitism so accusing us is fake news, and those who make these claims 
are simply idiots. Uh, they are the industrial fake news corporation. Progressive NGOs are probably confused as well. They are already busy writing their so-called research papers to inform Americans how I destroyed Hungarian democracy. According to their research, I managed to ruin Hungary's democracy in 2011. And then they say, I ruined it again in 2012. And then in 2013, and 14, and 15, and so on, each and every year. But how did I manage to destroy something that was already ruined? To answer to this question, you have to be a rabid liberal. Finally, with my invitation, you have surprised the elite of Democratic Party too. I want to be clear. We respect the government of the United States. We are guests here and we need to behave decently with the current administration as well. But there is another side of the coin which I cannot ignore. Your administration has put Europe and especially Brussels under ideological pressure. This is not good for us, it's bad. The Obama administration tried to force us to change the fundamental law of Hungary and delete Christian and national values from it. Do you get it? The leading power of the free world wanted to force us to change our constitution according to a globalist liberal concept. How bizarre. This came as a surprise and caused us a lot of pain, but we resisted this attempt successfully. Since then, we are not the favorites of the American Democrats. They did not want me to be here, and they made every effort to drive a wedge between us. They hate me and slander me and my country as they hate you and slander you and the America you stand for. We all know how this works. Progressive liberals didn't want me to be here because they knew what I would tell you. Because I'm here to tell you that we should unite our forces. Because we Hungarians know <laughs> because we Hungarians know how to defeat the enemies of freedom on the political battlefield. Dear friends, we Hungarians defeated communism, which was forced on us by Soviet troops and arms. It took a while. We began our fight in 1956 and won in 1990, but we did it. Our fathers fired the first shot, and we, their sons, won the war. We know what we have Ronald Reagan to thank for. <laughs> but communists are tough to beat. They rose from their ashes, came together with the liberals, and come back all around the world stronger than ever. If somebody has doubts whether progressive liberals and communists are the same, just ask us Hungarians. We fought them both, and I can tell you they are the same. So we had to defeat them again. And since 2010, we keep winning, winning, and winning. Last time, last time, with the endorsement of Donald Trump, which we are grateful for. So much winning that we are just scratching our heads. You know, winning has become our daily habit. But, but we know the old saying, yesterday's home runs don't win today's games. 
I've been a member of parliament for 32 years, spending 16 years in opposition and 16 years as prime minister. I learned that a quitter never wins and the winner never quits. This is the secret of our victories. You have to stand by your country in good times and in bad times. Dear friends, I'm here to tell you we should share our experiences. I am here to tell you that our values, the nation, Christian roots and family can be successful in the political battlefield. Even nowadays, when political life is ruled by liberal hegemony. I am here to tell you how we made these values successful and mainstream in Hungary. Perhaps our story can help you keep America great. So here is our story. The key to our success story is that when we fight, we give at least 100%. We tell the truth and represent the truth even if half the world attacks us for it. You cannot win half-heartedly. You either give everything you have got and win or play it safe and lose. So first and foremost, we need to trust our Judeo-Christian teachings. They help us decide <laughs> what actions are right and what actions are wrong. If you believe in God, you also believe that we humans were created in God's image. Therefore, we have to be brave enough to address even the most sensitive questions, migration, gender, and the clash of civilizations. Don't worry, a Christian politician cannot be racist. So we should never hesitate to heavily challenge our opponents on these issues. Be sure Christian values protect us from going too far. Moreover, we know that at the end of our lives, the moment will come when all our actions will be judged. So you can't do anything to have limits. As Clint Eastwood said, a man has got to know his limitations. <laughs> but unfortunately, the left in politics does not know any limitations. And my friends, as it happens, today's progressives try to separate Western civilization from its Christian roots once again. They are crossing a line that should never be crossed. If you separate Western civilization, from its Judeo-Christian heritage, the worst things in history happen. Let's be honest. The most evil things in modern history were carried out by people who hated Christianity. Don't be afraid to call your enemies by their name. You can't play safe, but they will never show mercy. Consider, for example, George Soros as you call him here. In Hungary, in Hungary we call him Yuri Bachi, which means Uncle Georgi. The wealthiest and one of the most talented Hungarians on earth. Just a hint, be careful with talented Hungarians. Uh, I know George Soros very well. He is my opponent. He believes in none of the things that we do. And he has an army at his service. Money, NGOs, universities, research institutions, and half the bureaucracy in Brussels. He uses this army to force his will on his opponents, like us Hungarians. He thinks that the values dear to all of us led to the horrors of the 20th century. But the case is exactly the opposite. Our values save us from repeating history's mistakes. The horrors of Nazis and communism happened because some Western states in continental Europe abandoned their Christian values. 
and today's progressive are planning to do the same. They want to give up on Western values and create a new world, a post-Western world. Who is going to stop them if we don't? Dear friends, I have also learned that in order to win, it is not enough to know what you are fighting for. You also have to know how you should fight. My answer is play by your own rules. But how do you do that? It is as simple as it sounds. You must play to win. You cannot expect victory and plan for defeat. You have to believe that you are better than your left liberal opponents are. And don't care what the liberals say. They always say you will lose. They say it cannot be done. You just have to prove them wrong. But there is one thing I have learned. We cannot fight successfully by liberal means. Because our opponents use liberal institutions, concepts, and language to disguise their Marxist and hegemonist plans. Politics, my friend, are not enough. This war is a culture war. We have to revitalize, we have to revitalize our churches, our families, our universities, and our community institutions. Hungary, <laughs> Hungary is an old, proud, but David-sized nation standing alone against the woke globalist Goliath. We invite the solidarity of the American conservatives. They are in total attack, so we need a total defense. You have to be brave. If you feel fear, you have a job to do. The only thing we Hungarians can show you is how to fight back by our own rules. Let me give you a couple of examples on migration. Ladies and gentlemen, we were the first ones in Europe who said no to illegal migration and stopped the invasion of illegal migrants. <laughs> we believe that stopping illegal migration is necessary to protect our nation. We in Hungary decided to ask the people whether they want illegal migration or not. We held a referendum. Hungarian people decided they don't want migration, so they don't want to play by the rules of the progressive. They rejected the false claim that migrants cannot be stopped and forced us leaders to act and we stopped illegal migration. We have actually built that wall, and it stopped <laughs> illegal migration. <laughs> As Tucker Carson said when he visited us, quote, it's not a high-tech wall, but guarded by people who love their country. And the border protection system works. During the Great Migration Crisis in 2015, 400,000 illegal migrants came to our borders. This is almost three times as much as Genghis Khan had when he invaded Europe. After we built the wall, we managed to reduce illegal migration to zero. This year, this year, we have already suffered 160,000 illegal border crossing attempts. 160,000 illegal border crossing attempts. So, we at the Hungarian borders catch every illegal migrant and escort them back to the other side of the border. 
The rule is simple. The rule is simple. You can apply for asylum at our embassies. But if you try to come to Hungary illegally, you will never ever make it. Even though, even though we are under pressure not only from the South, but also from the ACHAT of the European Union as well. Yes, this is the case, my friends. They want us to give up our zero migration policy because they also know that this is the decisive and final battle of the future. But the future is the most important thing we can give to our children and our grandchildren. So in Hungary, we will never surrender. Dear friends, <coughs> Let's move on family policy, which is the heart of our politics. Progressives claim all over the world that families should not be protected. In Europe, they say there is no such thing as family, because love is love and family is family. If you cannot define family, nothing is a family. And they say, that Western families are the places where the oppression of the so-called patriarchy begins. But in case of family policy, in Hungary, we again played by our own rules. We know that family is the place to transfer the values of parents to the next generation. If traditional families are gone, there is nothing that can save the West from going under. Therefore, last year in Hungary, we spent more than 6% of our GDP on family policy. All subsidies are already available to families following conception. Families automatically get tax breaks. The state takes over your student loans after your third child. Women are exempt from paying personal income tax for life after the birth of their fourth child. And we are fighting to extend the same zero tax policy for mothers with three children. So, if you are not married yet, you should immediately find a Hungarian wife. <laughs> in, the, in the last 10 years, Ladies and gentlemen, in the last 10 years, the number of marriages has doubled and the number of abortions has halved in Hungary. It's not a bad start. <laughs> Dear friends, in Hungary, we had to build not just a physical wall on our borders, and the financial wall around our families, but the legal wall around our children to protect them from the gender ideology that targets them. <laughs> Let's be clear, they think that parents should follow the progressive way of parenting. If they refuse to do so, they should be forced by the state. We Hungarians know this old communist trick and we reject it. Hungarian people rejected sexual orientation programs in schools without parental consent at a referendum again. Never before has there been a referendum in the long history of Hungary where such a huge majority of people said no to gender or anything. Now the Hungarian constitution now the Hungarian constitution protects families and children. Let me quote a few sentences from our Hungarian fundamental law. Our constitution reads, the family and the nation constitute the principal framework of our coexistence. Hungarian state institutions are obliged to protect the Christian culture of Hungary. Hungary shall protect the institution of marriage as the union of one man and one woman. 
Family ties, family ties shall be based on marriage or the relationship between parents and children. To sum up, the mother is a woman, the father is a man, and leave our kids alone. Full stop, end of discussion. <laughs> Dear friends, another factor of our success is that my government is devoted to law and order without compromise. We decided we, decided we don't need more genders, we need more rangers. <laughs> Less drag queens and more Chuck Norris. <laughs> we, believe, we believe there is no freedom without order. If there is no order, you get chaos. In Hungary, law enforcement agencies are not people's enemies. They are the guardians of freedom. Therefore, law should not protect criminals, but protect the victims and those who are defending the law. Police should be well respected. So. <coughs> So Hungary is the safest country in Europe. Actually, Budapest is among the very few European capitals where you can walk around safely even in nighttime. In Hungary, you will only hear more funds to the police. And finally, a few remarks on taxation, dear friends. Progressives always want your money. They love higher taxes. We believe that people should have their money in their own hands. To this end, we introduced a flat tax on personal income, which is currently 15%. In, in just 10 years' time, we reduced the tax wedge by 10%, which was the biggest tax cut in Europe. We have the lowest corporate income tax in Europe, which is flat, 9%. With this low corporate income tax flux year, we had a 27% investment rate, which was among the best in Europe. Just recently, we came under fire again when we went against the Global Minimum Tax Initiative. All European countries surrendered. Hungary is the last man standing. But the empire always strikes back. The current US administration decided to terminate the tax treaty between Hungary and the United States, which was probably the best tax deal ever negotiated. It was good for US investors. There are 1,700 U.S. companies operating in Hungary. I think it was indeed the revenge of the left. Because the U.S. Treasury somehow forgot that they have a very similar treaty with Russia, but not with Hungary anymore. Funny, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, finally, we need to talk about the war. The war. Ukraine is our neighbor. We are in full solidarity with them. The attack, the attack of Russia against Ukraine has forced close to one million refugees to Hungary so far. Currently, more than 10,000 refugees every day. The majority of these refugees ventures further into Europe but one million people entering a country of 10 million is a lot. In my view, the globalist leader strategy escalates and prolongs war and decreases the chance of peace. 
Without American-Russian talks, there will never be peace in Ukraine. More and more people will die and suffer, and our economies will come to the brink of collapse. I cannot tell you what to do. It's your sovereign decision. I can, however, tell you one thing. Only strong leaders are able to make peace. We, we in the neighborhood of Ukraine, are desperately in need of strong leaders who are capable of negotiating a peace deal. May they, may they please help us. We need a strong America with a strong leader. Dear friends, <coughs> dear friends, I think I have provoked you long enough. So before Matchlab takes my microphone away, let's come to a conclusion. The world has several great nations, but none with the power and influence of the United States. For better or for worse, the world looks to you for the future. And the future of the West is in grave doubt. We in the West have not faced a crisis like this for a long time. The ideological wars of the 20th century against the totalitarian powers of Nazi Germany and Soviet Union were terrible. But democratic West rallied and defeated them both. Now the West is at war with itself. We have seen what kind of future the globalist ruling class has to offer. But we have a different future in mind. The globalists can all go to hell. I have come to Texas. Uh, <laughs> So, so we must take up the fight. Victory will never be found by taking the path of least resistance. We must take back the institutions in Washington and in Brussels. We must find friends and allies in one another. We must coordinate the movement of our troops because we face the same challenge. You have midterm elections this year, then presidential and congressional elections in 24, and we will have election in the European Parliament same year. These two locations will define the two fronts in the battle being fought for Western civilization. Today we hold neither of them, yet we need both. You have two years to get ready. I have to tell, it won't be easy, but don't be afraid. Just believe in St. Jan Paul's, the Polish Pope's teaching. There is no enemy that Christ has not already defeated. So let's go out and do it. God bless Texas. God bless our friendship. Good luck and goodbye.